Hi, this is Jan from Sleeping Baby Productions. I figured since I'm kind of on a roll with the um, shoulder videos, I'd do one of the gathered shoulder. Uh, this is not one that I sell, but it's one that a lot of people find comfortable, and it's easy enough to sew, so I thought I'd do a quick video. Um, with the gathered shoulder, the most important thing to know is the further away from the rings you sew, the more comfortable it's going to be, the more the fabric can kind of scrunch up when you wear it. Um, if you're sewing really close to the rings, you're going to get basically a very, very wide shoulder spread because um, that seam is going to keep the fabric from scrunching up. So I like to sew at the very minimum about five to six inches from the rings and ideally eight to twelve inches. Um, a thing you can, one of the things you can do with the gathered shoulder if you have enough material is measure the point where you want the rings to be, which is usually called corsage position. It's like the hollow between your shoulder and your breast if you're female. Um, if you kind of go from the rings back over your shoulder, it's going to be a number usually between about 8 to 16 inches. For me it's about 15 inches. Um, I'm not going to do that on this piece because it's not actually long enough to, to sew that much in. Um, I'm just going to show like 8 to 10 inches I think. So the first thing you're going to want to do is measure the point from your cut edge. You can see I've got a nice straight cut edge here. I do that by snipping one end and then kind of teasing out one of these uh, weft threads and then you just pull it. Sometimes it takes a few tries um, but you can see here's one of the weft threads and if you pull it out then you can cut along the line where that weft thread was. Uh, it's usually a different color from the rest of the wrap so whoa, or the fabric in general. Linen it works well with. Um, thinner cottons it doesn't tend to work so well with. Uh, so I'm going to measure about 16 inches from that cut edge and I might as well do it this way since I've got the distance. 16, 16, so here's 16 inches from the end. Now with a wrap like this where you can see the um, warp, th warp threads, uh, you can either kind of freehand it and use those as a guide. Um, you can use a sewing marker which is water soluble so it will wash out if you put it in the laundry. Um, or you can iron along that edge. It's humid today and I don't feel like getting out the iron so I'm just going to finger press and I'm kind of followed that weft thread over to use my as my line. I'm going to you know press this really well with my fingers to make an obvious line. Um, you don't have to do this but you need really some kind of straight marking just to keep the seam straight once you're sewing. So then I'm going to thread my rings on and you can see where I've finger pressed. There's this nice line. There's actually a fold line behind that. So I probably could have just used that fold line. And then what I'm going to do is just fold this under by about half an inch. Um, if you wanted to, you could baste this in. Uh, I don't think it's strictly necessary. Um, now, I'm kind of holding that where my fold was now. I'm going to try to line up those stripes so it looks neat if you wear it on either side. Um, you can pin or you can just kind of hold it as you go. If it's the first time you're doing this, I would recommend pinning. I don't actually sew a gathered shoulder very often, so I'm just going to pin on each one of these stripes to keep myself honest. Pardon the sniffles, we're rearranging stuff and it's very dusty. Um, so I would pin probably every four inches or so at least. And you're going to be holding the material straight as you sew, so it's not going to pile up quite so much as it looks like it's going to. And I'm just sort of eyeballing that um, half inch. If you wanted to, you could press that as well, but you don't really need to. Um, this tends to work better on unwashed fabrics because they'll hold a finger press better. So if you have already washed your fabric, which you really should um, before you sew because it's going to shrink and that can do strange things to some fabrics, um, then it might be time to get out the iron. I just didn't feel like doing it today. I rarely feel like ironing. Sometimes it's soothing, most of the time it's, ugh, I've got to get out that iron. So bear with me, this is the tedious part. Generally speaking, if you do one tedious thing, it makes the rest of it a lot easier. So that's why we're doing this. And, you know, it's kind of tedious to pull out that weft thread to get the straight edge, 
but it's worth doing because it makes it so much easier to sew a straight line if you've got a straight edge to start with. Um, a lot of people like to wear a gathered shoulder. It really varies from person to person though. I could never get a gathered shoulder really comfortable on myself. Um, I had a hard time getting it to scrunch up in a way that was comfortable for me. So this is the kind of thing where you can kind of start with a very long piece of material and I wouldn't use a wrap to start with because that tends to be kind of expensive fabric. But if you have a, a cheaper fabric that you can sort of practice with, see what you like, um, you can always take out or cut off a shoulder that you don't like. So now I'm ready to sew. Move this over a little bit. And now it's just a matter of sewing a straight line. So I'm setting my machine to a stitch that does an automatic back tack. If you don't have that, then you need to remember to reverse. Um, and I'm just gonna go. Um, I'm sewing over my pins. You probably shouldn't. <laughs> Uh, I've done it so many times, I know how my machine's going to react, but if you have a uh, kind of a basic machine, um, it could end up being a problem. You just take it slowly. Um, I'm holding it fairly taut, and you see every once in a while I'll stop, kind of regroup the fabric, just so that I'm, getting, I'm sewing on a straight piece and not trying to sew on a wrinkled piece. And you don't need to have a super, super short stitch, uh, especially if you think you might take it out later. Um, I use a stitch length of four and a half. Um, that's close to being the longest stitch that this machine has, which is a five. So you can kind of play with that. Um, the stitches are like two, three millimeters apart. So I'm back tacking again because it's at the end of the seam. You always want to back tack on a seam that's gonna, st on a stitching line that's gonna stay in. Uh, to keep the stitching from coming out. So I'm going to take out my pins. Um, with a gathered shoulder, I like to see at least three lines of stitching. Two is sufficient, but you know, if one fails, you really want to have a backup, a couple backups. Um, I'm going to just sew on the side because it's here. Some people like to use a triple stitch, which is, I'll show you that next. Um, I'm not a huge fan of triple stitch. It makes a very kind of a thick stitching line and I don't think it's really any safer. You're just making three holes in the fabric instead of one for each pass and I'm not entirely certain that that's any safer than doing a few lines of single stitch. I think it probably weakens the material more. But this is a triple stitch. Um, it's actually a stretch stitch, so if you're sewing on stretchy fabrics, it's something that people tend to use. But this is what it looks like. This is a pretty short one too. So it's really, it's pulling a lot of holes in my fabric. Um, it's going so fast you probably can't see, but it's pulling the material back each time. And I'm just gonna stop that there. You can see it's a much thicker looking line. And it's actually making three stitches in each of those spots and I'm really I don't like that very much so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna go on with my just plain straight stitch um, the more lines of sewing you do the harder it's gonna be to scrunch this up in the end um, if you're sewing really far from the rings it's okay to use several lines of stitching um, because it's gonna scrunch up in the rings close to the rings as you can see you can see I can scrunch that up pretty well there. Um, it is overlapping itself a lot in there, which is another thing I didn't really like about uh, gathered shoulder. But you can already see, since I've folded that under, it's kind of hard to really scrunch this up. On the side, a thick seam makes it harder to scrunch, but that's probably far back enough that it would be still be comfortable for someone wearing it. So that is a plain gathered shoulder. Um, you can sew it closer to or farther away from the rings. Make sure you clip your threads when you're done, because if you're giving this to someone, they might say, oh, loose threads and pull them, and then half of your sewing is undone. I know that's happened to me. Be careful when you clip, though, that you're not clipping your fabric. Little tiny scissors are good for this. But, ooh, there we go. Gathered shoulder. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Bye.